This is the Sahara Desert we know best, sandy and dry, where less than two centimeters of rain falls annually. But satellite images show rain clouds swirling over the western Sahara, and radar forecasts predicting heavy rains in parts of Mauritania and Mali that are normally bone dry. Heavy rains in the usually parched regions of North Africa can turn catastrophic. Last month in Sudan, torrential rain caused a dam to burst, destroying villages, killing many and displacing tens of thousands of people. A similar catastrophe happened in Libya last year from uncommonly heavy rains. The World Meteorological Organization reported this week that over the past 60 years, Africa has observed a warming trend that has become more rapid than the global average, resulting last year in deadly heat waves, heavy rains, floods, tropical cyclones, and prolonged droughts. What happens in Africa can affect the weather on the other side of the ocean. The Sahara Desert normally is known for dust clouds. They can travel across the Atlantic to South America, actually providing nutrients in the Amazon. But the rain that normally makes tropical Africa green has shifted north over parts of the western Sahara. One effect is to disrupt weather in the eastern Atlantic, where the formation of hurricanes often begin their journey to the Caribbean and North America. The result this summer, fewer hurricanes. There have been only five named storms so far this year, and the last was August the 12th. No big Atlantic storms in more than three weeks, which is exceedingly rare at this time of year. In July, Hurricane Beryl was the earliest forming Category 5 storm ever recorded. It was supercharged by ocean waters that have been the warmest on record the last two summers. There was every expectation this would be a summer of intense Atlantic storms, but it's gone quiet, in part because of the shifting rain patterns in West Africa. These African waves, when they're up to the north in the Saharan Desert, it's more of a hostile environment. So they come out into the Atlantic and they weaken right away instead of developing into those hurricanes. September and October are often the most active months for hurricanes. For millions living on North America's east coast, forecasters are watching the perplexing lull in Atlantic storms, and this year in particular, keeping an eye on the gathering clouds over the Sahara Desert. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.